It's the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time where we turn our attention to the papers, uh, bringing you great analysis and insight right here with Tunde Kolawali, who joins a conversation via phone. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Lady Mercy. Hope you had a great night. Thank you uh, uh, for asking. I did. Uh, we start off with we start off with the leadership newspaper. On the leadership newspaper, letter to Nigeria Democracy Day season uh, by the president. I mean, that letter has been published. It might just be dominating some of the papers this morning. Ronnie Mates, APC defers to Tunubu. We came here, emerge as Atiku's vice president, presidential candidate. And some quarters are saying that, you know, Wiki has probably tendered down, but I don't know how, sh how true that is. Governors won't influence Tunubu's running mate. Uzodema. Interesting. Part is in rush to meet Friday deadline. And Malabu, Nigeria loses 1.7 billion naira JP Morgan Chase case. Oh, very sad. 2023 polls. Army wants commanders, officers to stay, stay clear of politics. And carries co defendants get two year jail term. I take that again. Carrie's co-defendant gets two-year jail term. Uh, that's on the leadership this morning. All right, let's move on from the leadership to uh, the punch. Um, doesn't have any letter from the president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it has some information that will be of interest to Nigerians. A big story there with a the kicker Muslim Muslim ticket. The headline can, uh, that's the Christian Association of Nigeria, Others warn parties as Buhari meets governors. PDP names Atiku's VP on Thursday. I know a lot of fake news has been making the rounds on social media as to who Atiku had picked as his running mate. Indeed, some news outlets had already put out the information. Uh, and then if you read the story, you'd see that they're saying uh, reports have it. You know, I don't know who they Under are. probability. Who are they rushing to impress? Why not just wait? Let the man name it and then you... I mean, I mean, I got calls yesterday, people saying uh, someone had been picked as Atiku's VP, and I said, hey, see, don't allow yourself to be deceived. Anyway, the following writers to that headline, um, Muslim Muslim ticket dangerous, declaration of war, uh, Khan warns parties, vows stiff resistance. What matters is responsive, responsible government, hunger knows no religion, Tinbu's group, uh, constitution doesn't stipulate religion, as criterion for choosing VP, says Governor Uzodema. More from V Punch. AKT, INEC IG, a promised credible governorship poll. Tinubu 14 governors campaign for APC. At the top of that front page, fuel subsidy surpasses health, education, welfare budgets. World Bank warns Nigeria, page 20, or what massacre Southwest governors to reject security. Lawmakers demand attackers arrest. Uh, the writer to that story, Southwest won't tolerate another attack, says Akari Dulu. Uh, three governors donate 75 million naira. We'll put security agencies under fire until they arrest killers, reps. That's page 30. Probably adopting a different approach from um, the governor of Benue State, Samuel Tom, who always would tell the uh, citizens that they are on their own and they should defend themselves. Um, Dollar rises by 21%. FX shortage persists after party primaries. Is there a link? Well, you can read more for uh, that. FG, 10 states plan 2,000 megawatts off grid power. Uh, right, when you hear plan, you know, I wonder what the will say about this when you hear plan. Um, 1.04 trillion naira loss to 2,000. And 21 aircraft repairs in foreign countries, FG. All right, I think <laughs> they are telling us that 31 policemen dismissed, others sanctioned. Over 14,976 complaints. Government abducted two in Ogun Church, 14 uh, in Katsina and Bielsa as well. Diesel price may hit 1,500 naira per liter. 75% uh, of filling stations closed, according to marketers. And um, we've been hearing that they've been queues in Abuja. It was in the news yesterday. The papers recovered it uh, before now. 
during the primaries, I saw some of my friends in Abuja posting online that uh, why are we having uh, queues? I mean, traffic, traffic jam in Abuja when there is no fuel. And I was like, ah, but we have fuel in Lagos. Today, we see. You saw it. <laughs> small, small. You know when it's about to come. It's so weird, yeah, waffle, I weather saw could change. It. I it's saw little that. queues popping up. I don't know if it's panic buying or. But I, I, we I, reject I, I, every situation of first case in Lagos. Is this you praying? Saying a prayer <laughs> this we can, morning? We can, we can get into that again. No, because I saw that as well. And I anyway. started asking myself, it's possible that we're, probably you might just be right. having we'll, another few scars. We'll get the thoughts of Tony Kola when, he, when we're done with that. But those are stories coming uh, on the front page headlines, coming on the front page of the, the punch. Away from the punch, let's take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Buhari rejects pressure to impose running mate on Tunivu. I mean, who are this person's imposing, or trying to pressure the president? He's the president. Um, it takes decision without cabal. Interesting. That's what the president is quoted to say. Uh, a lot of persons will not agree with that. Large turnover of reps, a big loss to democracy. Badabi Amila is quoted. And underneath, Lawan consoles senators who lost out in primaries. Assure Senate will address the loopholes in electoral acts. Again, you find Nigeria lost 2.5 billion naira to aircraft maintenance abroad in 2021. And moving away from that caption, uh, you find JP Morgan wins 1.7 billion naira trial against Nigeria or war massacre. Southwest governors to hold security meeting. Abiodu is quoted. Ogun Lagos Quara governors donate 75 million naira. Kidnappers of Zamfara wedding guests demand 145 million naira ransom. That's a lot of money. Nigeria to lose 5 trillion naira in 2022 over fuel subsidy, the World Bank is saying. And says inflation likely to increase further. Additional 1 million Nigerians going into poverty by the end of 2022. Uh, alleged cocaine deal, Abakari's co-defendant bags two years imprisonment. And PDP committee recommends Wike as a Tiku's running mate. I mean, this is how the Daily Independence reports. And also, Peter Obi visits Egypt to understudy countries pa education, and finance sector. Mm. These are some of the headlines this morning on the Daily Independence newspaper. All right, at this point, let's bring in uh, Tunde Kalole, a legal practitioner who is our uh, guest this morning. And of course, uh, uh, we'll be analyzing, he'll be analyzing the headlines. Uh, Tunde Kalole, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you as well. All right, thank you very Thanks much for, for having time. me. Yes, and let, let's start with um, the last one that Mercy talked about. This is coming on the front page uh, of the Daily Independent newspaper. Um, he has received some stake from his fellow uh, presidential aspirant uh, talking about uh, Omoyele Shore. I saw his tweet yesterday. But um, uh, Peter B is off to Egypt. The picture is shared on his Twitter account to go and, in his words, on the study, Egypt's path, education, and finance sector. Is this... Um, necessary for a presidential candidate to make some noise about. Amoyele uh, Shore says, uh, you know, uh, Peter Obi is not prepared to be president because he had uh, eight years as governor of Anambra State, had um, a run during an election cycle as a running mate to a presidential candidate. He was on a presidential ticket and that by now should have had all these things figured out. What do you say? Sorry, I didn't quite get that. All right. Um, Peter Obi has visited Egypt, is on a trip to understudy the country's power, education, and finance sectors. And uh, he put out a statement, okay. yeah, a tweet, and some pictures showing him at the airport uh, boarding a, a commercial flight to Egypt. Um, one of his, <laughs> yes, yes, you know, one of his uh, fellow aspirants, yeah. Omoile Shore of AAC, uh, is saying that uh, Peter Obi should have figured all these things a long time ago, that what will he learn? about Egypt's uh, power education and um, health sector in three exactly. days, in three days, that he had eight years as governor and uh, a full election cycle as a running mate to a presidential candidate. Uh, he should have got That's all these true. things figured out. That's, 
Honestly speaking, I agree with my relation with Red. One one would have expected, as it used to be done in the past, that before you even throw your hat into the link, you would have done your own work. You would have done a lot of research. You would have mapped out your strategy and tactics. And also, where the funds will come from to run some of the programs and manifestos you intend to deliver to the people. That was what used to happen in the past. You will recollect when Chief Abake Miawolowo, when Namda Zikwe, when they were contested, they had in They assembled a team of experts who advised them on the program that their party should adopt that can take the nation forward, how the programs are to be executed, and where the money will come from. You will also recollect that here in Lagos, before Elijah Latif, that can be embarked on a program, the blueprint for that program would have been done by experts from various uh, fields. Look at the housing projects that Alaji Latif Jack and they built. Would you believe it that the use of pillars to reinforce buildings today, instead of using blocks all around, emanated from some of the advices and research that people gave to Alaji Jack and the civil engineers, people like Ayodele Awototi and Co. Then look, to minimize the cost of building, you can put in pillars in, in, in there and then use little blocks and other materials. And that thing has become the end thing today. Those are the sort of things that you want to see with serious minded political aspirants and not all these journeymen, ambitious people who have no program whatsoever for the people. I also would say, that Peter will be with all the noise he's been making all over the place, shouldn't be exhibiting this kind of naivety on the eve of a presidential election. All right, Tunde Kola Wale, um, let's quickly also yes, uh, let's also look at uh, move away from that and look at the Delhi Independent newspaper where. Uh, you have the report saying that Buhari rejects pressure to impose running mate on Tunubu. What are your thoughts? What? And according to the presidency, oh. uh, the presidency is saying that he takes his decision without cabal. And prior to this time, even though we haven't been able to see a proof to whether there's a cabal or not, there's a constant um, thought and feel of saying that uh, you probably just have the cabal taking the shorts and uh, deciding on behalf of the president. Uh, well, uh, first and foremost, with the choice of uh, running mates for the APC presidential candidate, I think since the president decided he wasn't going to impose a presidency or a presidential aspirant on his party, and that he also petitioned, at the end of the day, the consensus candidacy. It should be expected that he wouldn't be too eager to, to impose a running mate on the flag bearer of his party. I think that is the way it should be done. There ought to be a level playing ground for whoever may want to lobby to become the vice president or the running mate of the APC. There is nothing wrong, and I must say this, for the, pres for the president to have his preference, either for who becomes the president or becomes his running mate. What will be wrong is for him not to allow the delegates or the rank and file of the party to decide who flies the flag of the APC as president and also whom the presidential candidate chooses as his running mate. It is natural to have preference, but it will be wrong to now use your good offices to impose a candidate of the party, either as the flag bearer or the president, or as the running mate. So I think the president is in good stead to have uh, stood aloof in who became the president 
and who became his running a, a mate. And so the Kaaba, let me say this, all over the world, there is usually a Kaaba behind the most government, behind most uh, presidency. Look at Russia, for example. You hear of the oligarchy. And who are the oligarchy? They are the ones who are in charge of um, the apex of the Russian economy. They are the ones who deal in gases, who deal in petroleum products, and who deal in massive importation and arms and ammunition manufacturing, which is sold to the army. In America, too, you have the oligarchy. You have the gun uh, manufacturing uh, people. The people who manufacture weapons. Most times when the Republicans are in power, the arms and ammunition manufacturers always uh, stand in good stead compared to other allies in the society. The problem with our own Kaaba is that uh, they don't come from the background of an enlightened self-interest. They come from the background of wanting to use power, of wanting to use the presidency, of wanting to manipulate whoever is in power to enrich them, to give them plum jobs, to give them plum contracts, to employ their wars and relations into juicy jobs in parastatas, in ministries, in the bank, and then in the presidency. Furthermore, most times, some people pretend to be members of the cabal in Nigeria or in the presidency, whereas they are nothing. They merely go looking for ambitious politicians who want to be governors, who want to be presidents, who want to be ministers, and they sell the dummy to them that they have the year of the president, of the vice president, of this social governor, and that if he makes this amount of money available, mostly in billions and in dollars and in and pound sterling, they will be able to get for him whatever post he aspires or is interested in. We used to have a man, if you remember, uh, when I say he comes from Bune State, his name starts with Terry. And who used to tell people that all you needed to do is to consult him and whatever you want in the society or in government or in the business sector, he'll be able to get for you. These are influence peddling allies who use their so-called influence to make money, to enrich themselves, to corrupt the system. So a good government will have a way, a mechanism, and ways and means to discipline, to rein in, to ensure that it is not just a few people, that it is not the cabal that dictates to its government, whatever it does with power, whatever program it executes, and now it delivers on the dividends and leverages of democracy. It would be naive for anybody to say that you can run any society or any government without some influence peddling and life behind it. All right, thank you very much, uh, um, Tunde Kolawole, for that. Let's uh, move on uh, to look at the uh, papers and the attention they're given to uh, the tussle for who becomes a vice president or the running mate, rather, of the political parties. Their attention is mostly on the two leading uh, political parties in Nigeria, the Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. Now, the Nation newspaper says that a PDP panel has okayed Yes Obike as Atiku's um, running mate. We haven't seen anything from Atiku to indicate that. There were rumors yesterday, indeed, uh, the word we came and confirmed. We're trending on Twitter. Uh, last night, uh, a search the internet didn't see no information uh, to that effect. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Apart from that, other papers have also, um, uh, you know, given attention to that. Uh, of course, as Messi said earlier, Buhari rejects uh, pressure to impose running mate on Tinbu is one uh, from the Daily Independent. So let's look at what is going on in the PDP first before you talk about the other one. Okay, for uh, we can. He is a very ambitious person. It is not impossible that he is the one flying the kite 
and put it fillers in the media that uh, it will be the that it should be chosen as the running mate for the PDP flag bearer. That is an idea article. You know, he did very well in the presidential primary of the PDP. He also spent a fortune of the River State money to get the president of the PDP. But at the end of the day, I think Alaji Atiku overspent him. I also think that the years of experience and the influence that Atiku has accumulated at the end of the day swung the pendulum of uh, victory to the side of uh, Alaji Atiku. I am not too sure that any presidential aspirant would like to choose a weekend as a running mate. He is rancorous, very loud. He behaves like a bull in a China wear shop. That is his loyalty too, so his principal is always suspect. He will recollect. He used to be the chief of staff. So former governor Roti Miyamichi, former minister of transport Roti Miyamichi, look at the way he did his principal and teamed up with uh, Mrs. Jonathan and eventually aligned forces with uh, President Goodlaw Jonathan to raise power from Governor Roti Miyamichi or former Governor Roti Miyamichi in River State. Ever since he got that power, he has not allowed Roti Miyamichi to have a home base. When you have a person as ambitious as Wiki, and they were sometimes as powerful as Wiki, and sometimes who have that kind of a resources at his disposal, most people will not want them as their deputies because they might be feeling it will be difficult to control, to manage them. And you and I do know a vice president, a deputy governor, and like spare tired to their principals. No Nigerian politician who want a similar powerful and ambitious person as a deputy. For the APC, I have very strong suspicion that with the role that the governors played in the emergence of Ashwaji as the flag bearer, as the presidential flag bearer of the APC, they will have a very decisive say in who becomes the running mate to Ashwa Dibola Ahmed Tinobu. It is not impossible that one of the governors will already be jostling for that position and lobbying his uh, colleagues to help him get it. It is also not impossible that uh, people like Shetima, who also played a very crucial role, that is Senator Shetima, a former governor of Orano State, might also want that uh, position. And you know, there has also been speculation that uh, the vice presidential slot of the APC should be zoned to the Northeast, where Shetima comes from. The other controversial issue regarding the running mate to all these presidential candidates is whether to choose a Christian or a Muslim. For certain people like a Rufai and for certain people like me, I really don't care whether the president and the vice president are both Muslims or whether the president and the vice president are both Christians. What I'm interested in is competence, ability to get Nigeria out of this uh, whirlwind of insecurity, ability to put food on the table of the average Nigerian person, ability to reduce the 33% unemployment that we now have in the society. If a Muslim Muslim ticket, if a Christian Christian ticket will provide or give solution to all these problems, I really don't care. Thank you well, so you much. We have to let you go now. Our society to has become more sensitive now to these religious issues, such that it may not be advisable for the two parties.
So Chief Muslim Sin as president and vice president. Because Tunde Kala Wale. What is happening all over the yeah. We appreciate your thoughts and perspective on uh, the yeah. papers this morning. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's because we're out of time. We look forward to sharing more of your thoughts as we proceed in the course of uh, the show uh, within the week, hopefully, or next week. We'll take a break now, but just before then, let's let you know what happened today in history. When we return, we'll be looking at the first major conversation INEC deadline. Stay with us.